So we know that at r equal to zero and z equal to z zero, you get pressure of the liquid to be atmospheric pressure. So applying this to this equation, you get P0 equal to rho G C0 plus constant. And then you can solve for constant, okay? So the constant here is pressure zero subtracted by rho G C0. Take this constant back to this equation. So you have P equal to rho omega square r square over 2 minus something like this. All right. Now, if we consider surface of the liquid, at any point here on the surface, pressure are atmospheric pressure. So at all points here, pressure are equal. Okay, so we know that at the surface, pressure are always atmospheric pressure. So if you replace this pressure here, the pressure on the left hand side is supposed to be pressure in our system, depending on the location. Pressure on the right here are constant pressure that puts on top of the liquid. Okay, so if you consider just on the surface only, P here can be taken to be P0, and it will be canceled out with that term, okay? And as a result, you can manipulate this equation to get Z0 subtracted by Z equal to omega squared R squared over 2G. From this equation, just replace pressure on the left-hand side by atmospheric pressure. And you can see from this that this equation relating Z with respect to R on the surface. And R here is square. So the equation by nature is parabolic. Okay? In other words, if you plot this equation with respect to the distance from the center, R, you will get a profile of water on top of the surface. That profile here form, form into a parabolic function. So if you want to learn how this vortex is formed, you can simply use this equation. Okay? Any question? Yes. Of course, you can use this point as boundary condition as well. You get the same thing. It's supposed to be the same thing. I mean, you will get different form of equation. It looks different, but you get R as a square as well. So the profile still parabolic. Okay.
Any question? Any other question? Now, since we have some time left, and I do not do not want to go on another chapter right now, and I do not want to let you go free at this time as well, so I'm going to say something else. In the handout, I give you another example, but that example has the fluid as a function of two variables. So far, I gave you three examples. Or since from the start, from the very beginning, velocity is a function of only one variable. Either R, theta, or Z, or either X, Y, or Z. You have never experienced velocity as a function of two variables, right? Conceptually, in terms of dropping terms in equation of motion or equation of continuity, you're supposed to be able to do that without any restriction. However, mathematically, if velocity is function of two more variables, integration would be complicated. Okay? So in the examination, you may see a problem that velocity is function of more than one variable. However, in that case, we will not ask you to solve equation. We just want you to drop some term and show me the differential equation. So read the problem statement carefully. All right? For two variables, for two or more variables, basically it's just mathematical problems. They are in chapter four. I give you one example in the handout in case, just in case that you are interested in. How we drop terms are the same. So before we go to chapter five or chapter six, I'm going to talk about the last topic in chapter three, okay? We have two equations. This one is equation of continuity under assumption of constant density. This term, this equation here is equation of motion. It's equation of Navier-Stokes equation because we use Newton law already. But you, you should notice here, I use the term modify pressure instead of pressure because I bring the gravity, gravitational term together with gradient of pressure. All together, it form into modified pressure. Okay? These two equations has unit. You can see the unit here. The del has no unit. What is unit of del? Del is supposed to be differential with respect to position. So del itself has unit of per, per meter, meter uh, power of minus one. Velocity is meter per second. So this equation has unit of per second, okay? This has unit as well, all right? Now, sometimes we, just like as engineer, we start to develop a process. And suppose you, you want to produce something in the process. Nobody here, wants to start producing by building the whole plant. We have to test it first, right? So normally we test everything, test just like suppose you have a mixing, you want to mix something up. When you test it, you just mix, mix it in small beakers to see how the reaction goes. And then once you're certain that everything goes smoothly, then you can scale it up to larger reactor tank and then up to commercial scale, right? 
That's what people do. That's called scaling up. Okay? So in order for scale, scale up, every uh, phenomena must be multiplied. So that means if you experience or if you test it in bigger, let's say 100 milliliters, and you want to commercialize to larger, let's say 100 cubic meter. Okay? Scale up problem is very big problem in industries. And suppose your diameter here is some certain value and the, thick, the height here is 10 centimeter, for example. Okay? If you want to scale up, how many times? Or like 100 liter, okay? A thousand times. It doesn't mean that you multiply 10 centimeter by 1,000. Not, that's not true. Because when you scale up the size, phenomena that takes place inside may not be the same. What we want in scaling up, we want every phenomena inside to be exactly the same as what inside our small system. So there's supposed to be a way to scale it up. Okay? It's not simply multiplication of the dimension. So how do we do that? So in order to keep the same transport phenomena, you have to go back at these two equations. Derive this equation, fit it for this system. Okay? However, if your equation is derived and somehow change them so that the equation itself has no unit, then it means that the equation can be applied to any system, any size, right? For example, if you have a nozzle, like nozzle in, in the injection engine, in the engine of the automobile, okay? The nozzle spray some fuel out for the combustion, and we want to know the pattern of flow of this fume. We cannot simply monitor the flow of fluid through this small nozzle, simply because it's too small. So we can somehow enlarge them, make it bigger, put some fluid through it, and see the flow behavior. Okay? And as long as you can apply this equation, apply equation to this system, and that equation has no dimension, then you can scale it down to the actual problem as well. So either scaling up or scale down would be benefit from equation with no unit. Okay? So the last chapter, I mean the last part of chapter three, equation of equation into dimensionless form. So, we still have time, right?